Hey, and welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to take another look at importing into Twinmotion. And before you watch this video, I would recommend that you first watch one of the actually first few videos that I've made for Twinmotion. And that was about importing and specifically the options and visibility settings and what you can expect from different import settings in a Twinmotion. And this in a way is a follow-up to that, but more or less to reinforce that video and to show you why it's so important to follow that and really to have success that you want to have within Twinmotion. And again, this is specifically coming from Revit. And while this is from Revit, this would apply to a number of other programs, but it will apply mostly to Revit because of how Revit is set up and the individual elements and everything like that. So take this with a grain of salt when using other programs, but it should apply to other programs all the same. So what are we looking at here? We're we're going to look at just this, this family. And so this family is a series of different components kind of all baked into one. And now I will say before we really get into the video that I'm not particularly excited about this type of a family and I wouldn't necessarily build something like this. I would have all of these countertops be different families. I'd have each one of these cabinets be its own. I wouldn't have them all baked into one family is what I'm saying. But for the sake of this video, it will work just the same. And so whether they're one object or 25 objects, it doesn't matter. The, the whole point of this video is that I have one object and we want to apply, of course, multiple materials to it, but we want to be able to organize that well within Twinmotion. So before that, if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, which I hope you do, please demolish that like button. Also, subscribe. That really helps me out a lot. Okay, getting into it right now. We are looking at this single family and we want to apply materials to this in Twinmotion, of course, after we import it. But... How we do that will be determined based on our import settings. So let me show you what I've done here first to make sure that things are organized. Once I click on the family, you can see it is one family. I can hit edit type and we can see that I've got a ton of different materials here. And in fact, I need to finish applying them. So right here, I've got a dishwasher base. And so what I wanna do is I can make a material, but in fact, I've already made a material and I have just called it dishwasher base. And I've done the same thing here for dishwasher panel. And I just want to call this panel. If I just spell this correctly, that would work. Dishwasher panel. And then for wall, I can make this really anything I want. But again, I want to use a material that I've just called wall. I'm trying to keep this simple for you. And just so you know, this you don't have to have any particular type of material. It, it In fact, it really doesn't matter if anything's applied if you're going to use twin motion materials. But... I'm going to use this material. I'm going to call it wall. So I have all of these materials applied to really all the different components and pieces that make up this family. Okay. So like we're pretty good there. Now the next thing to look at is our import settings. So we can come over to Twinmotion, the tab, and we can go to settings. And this is really the key. This is kind of the win or lose situation here. If you want to win, merge will be on no merge. We don't want to merge anything. We want all of these components to be its own thing. And just imagine whenever I choose no merge that everything will show up in Twinmotion the exact same way as it does in Revit. And by that, I mean when I go and try to select something in Twinmotion, it will be as if I'm selecting that particular element in Revit. And that's all based on how things are organized when we import into Twinmotion. And so if I were to merge by family, that means every single family would be one object, which in this case may not be that bad. And we can show you why here soon. But then there's also by material. So you have noticed that I went into this one family and replaced all the materials. And so I have like a list of materials for each one of the materials that are, it's all properly assigned within the family you'll notice that that will also work, but I want to show you why you may not want to use that. And so, of course, we want to put this back to no merge. Okay, great. I'm going to click C in Twin Motion. Make sure I go to New Project because we just want to see this as a new project. And we see, here we go. I want to move my speed down just a bit so we can actually move slowly enough to see what the heck is going on. And so, this this will work. I first want to open my materials tab here and I want to change my base there to water because it looks cool. 
does not matter whatsoever. I want to change this concrete maybe to a, a polished concrete up the scale to five or something. Okay, so we've got a floor. And so the main thing we want to look at here is, of course, this cabinet system. So when I click on this, like before, like in Revit, everything is imported as one single object. And that's kind of what I expected. That's what I had hoped for because that's the way it was in Revit. The floor is one object and the cabinet, this whole family is one object. And you could see it here. I've got this category. It's set as generic models and I've got the category of the floors, of course, is floors. So the main thing here is that we only have two objects. It looks like a lot of folders, but I have literally two objects and that's it. Now you might say, well, what the heck about the materials? How do we do that? Well, let's go to our material picker and, you know, we can start to see where I might have applied a uh, different material. So I applied a material to the wall here and you can see that there's my wall material. I could also choose this countertop. If I choose that, there's countertop. I can choose the side here. That's cabinet and then also door and then handle. So you can see all of those materials are properly applied because they were properly applied in Revit. Notice the no merge applies the same here with the materials, which is awesome. And that's really helpful to be able to help you apply materials correctly, which is really nice. So maybe what I want to do is also move the sun a bit so we can see this in a different light, literally in a different light. So this looks a little better. We can start to apply the materials a little bit better. And so I don't, I can't say that I need to spend the video applying materials, but I do want to go ahead and do that just really quickly and make sure that you can see what's going on here. So if I want to take a wood and put this on my panel, maybe what I want to do is take one of these woods down here. That looks good. Maybe this one here. And I want to change the scale maybe to four or five. That looks good. And so really you could see that this is applying everywhere it should be. You know, if I wanted to change the scale, the rotation, whatever, it doesn't matter. I could do it that way. But maybe I decide, well, you know, I want this to also apply to my door material. So I can literally drag this to my door and it will replace my door. And you can see that it will replace all the doors. Now, maybe you want that, maybe you don't. Now, the thing to be aware of also is if I come to all my materials here, it's not necessarily replacing the maps with that material. Like it's not, it's not replacing the maps on the door material. It's literally replacing the material from that door material. And you can see that because we're currently set to replace material. That's just, it is what it is. So if I want to undo this and we want to apply to object, my guess is we're going to have the same effect. So if I apply this to right there, we could see that, yes, it's not that it's the door. It, it happens to be that that's material. That's the material. It's not the door material. It's this new material that I've literally replaced it with. So this doesn't matter. If you're applying to an object, it's going to apply it to that single object versus replace material is going to replace it completely, which in this case, again, is what we want. We're fine with that. We're good with that. I want to rotate this 90 degrees and we'll go ahead and apply that to the doors because it, it looks good. It looks fine. Any And now the nice thing is that any change that we make to this material, maybe we want to darken it up a bit, it's all made across the material and it just looks good and it makes sense. So maybe now we want to come to a metal, maybe we come to a chrome and add that to our handles. Looks great. It's going to apply to all of it. Maybe we want to also apply that same material over here to our faucet and then maybe again to our sink. Looks good. And my, maybe for the countertops, we want to add a, a bit of a stone color, stone material. You know, this isn't too bad. I want to get this look here. Maybe this is a bit darker as well. So, you know, this looks a bit hideous, but it also isn't that bad. It kind of is what it is. Maybe finally we've got some stones here at the front as a backsplash and also that back wall. Maybe it's more of that color. Maybe our scales up there. So really like it's not terrible. It's not great looking. You get the idea. It's starting to do a bit of what we want. And really, this is all about making this look the way we want it to. And I don't mean my materials. I mean, from an organizational standpoint, again, I've applied all these materials, but the thing to be aware of is that I have all of this within the one object. And that's really nice, particularly because I might have these materials that show up in a different 
object somewhere else in my project. And so if that were the case, I would be managing those materials somewhere else just like I would be if it were on the same object. It basically, it doesn't have these materials don't have to be on the same object, which makes this really powerful. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and save this. And after I save it, we'll go back to Revit and export it a different way. And we're going to see what we get. So back in Revit now, we want to go to settings. And again, maybe we want to decide, OK, by family, we want to export this by family. And my guess is because I have one single family here that this will have zero impact. It really, I really do. But what I want to do is actually move this here and we'll just make a copy of it. So there's two of them. So with that, we can see into in motion and see what happens. Okay, so we have two of them. But now the nice part is <laughs> it took all the materials that we had there already and it's, you know, properly applied, you know, more or less. Like it's, for some reason, my panel material, what, was not kept, but that's easy enough to do that right there. So we've got our panel material, everything back to normal. And honestly, this looks perfect. It looks great. And this is what we would hope for. We had copied the family and we literally get the same result somewhere else because it's the same family. Now, this is the key here. This is the main thing to be aware of whenever you're merging by family. Now, when I click on this, not only do I get the one, but I get the two. Both of them are selected. I still have only two objects in my entire scene, but you might say, well, I actually have three because I technically have three in Revit. I have my floor and then I have one family and then a copy of the family. So three objects. Now, because I merged by family, I can see that I only have two objects because the, both of these being the same family are considered to be one object. Now, for the sake of applying materials, this is fine and this is okay. Now, this is not something I would do because I want to see this organized in such a way to where it makes sense. And by makes sense, I mean the way it's set up in Revit. So when I come back to Revit, this is set up in a way where it's not one family. It's the same family, but twice. And so, again, I'm going to go back to my Twin Motion tab and set this up to no merge. And then close this and we're going to see into a motion again. And you can see immediately why this seems to make sense. I now have two different objects. They are two different objects in Revit and they are now two objects in Twin Motion. So again, if you want to see the Revit organized the way Revit is organized, then you would bring them back in with no merge. And it just kind of makes sense to not have them merge because you're going to get what you get in Revit. It just makes sense. And your mind will work much easier within Twinmotion knowing that it's set up the same way as Revit. Now, finally, let's come back to Revit again. And I'm going to now change this to by material. This is where things get kind of crazy. And you, you'll see why this is not the ideal way. And again, this is just my opinion. I'm not telling you this is right or wrong. It's the way you want to organize it. So look at this. So I've got... <laughs> I've got all my materials. I've got one scene. I don't have multiple objects. I have one single scene. And literally, I have one, <laughs> I have technically have different objects per every, every single material. And you'll see that I have a lot of materials. And these, these are just for cabinets. <laughs> just for cabinets and like a faucet and sink. And like, there's not a lot here. And you can see how many materials I have. And the reason why I want to organize this not by material but by single object or in other words not merge anything at all is so that I have full control over individual elements and in this case I don't like I really don't you can see I only have control over one of the like like each copy of the element it's all based on the material and you could have materials that are the same in random places throughout the entire model and you're going to select random places in the entire model and to me, that just doesn't make sense to do that. Like, why would you want to do that? I don't understand that. Um, I can see some applications for that if you're kind of a slave to the materials that you have set up in Revit. But I would just say take the time to organize everything in Revit the way you want to and get them to Twinmotion. It's all about organizing in Revit because all the work visually and graphically is done in Twinmotion. And that's what I would recommend. Do all of those visual work all the workflows that you want to do visually in twin motion and just set yourself up for success in Revit by using proper organization, setting everything up because choosing no merge will allow everything to set up properly and make sense. 
And again, finally, we'll come back here to put no merge on once again. See in twin motion. And it, again, it just makes sense now. I have everything set up in Revit the way it is with the materials just fine. It is what it is. So honestly, that will do it for this video. I would, again, I would highly recommend that you check out one of the first few videos I've done on this particular subject, importing into Twinmotion, because this is very important. And I hope you can now see, maybe from a smaller scale, why you'd want to import with no merge. You get the exact same result as you do in Revit. So again, that'll do it for this video. If you did learn something, demolish that like button. Also, subscribe. That really helps me out a lot. I sure hope to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.